Now, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wanted to sound more natural? Have you ever just wanted to take your English up a level? I'm sure that's why you're here, right? <laughs> Welcome back to English with Catherine. This is my channel and this is where you can find daily natural British English. I've got 10 daily native phrases for you today. This is language that I use, everyone I know uses on a very regular basis. Really, what are we waiting for? Let's, let's just get started, yeah? Number one, take your time. Take your time. It means don't worry, no rush, chill, relax. In Britain, not only are we very polite, but we're also very punctual. We're always on time, generally, and if you're not, it's very rude. However, we don't want to stress other people out, and especially if they've warned us that they're running late, which is really considerate, by the way. All British culture is really about is being considerate. Well, we try to be. So if someone says, I'm running late, I'm really sorry, you can say, take your time. That's okay, don't worry. I sometimes have students that are worried about being overly polite with me, which is really sweet, but I often try to relax them because we're human and sometimes things happen. And in the middle of the class, sometimes the doorbell rings and you have to go and answer the door or you have to take a phone call. They say to me, I'm so sorry, I'll be like two seconds. And I just say, take your time. And that just makes them relax, you know, and they think, oh, it's okay, I can just take my time. <laughs> we're polite in Britain, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Number two, in one ear and out the other. In one ear and out the other. What do you think that means? This is about when someone tells you something that maybe you're not that interested in. And also maybe you're trying to be interested, but you're just not focused enough and you're distracted. As soon as you're told something, you forget it. Okay, so they tell you and it's, it's gone. Dad was trying to explain to me how an engine works in a car. Now, I have to say, I love cars. I love driving cars, and I love the aesthetics of cars, so the way that they look. He took a lot of effort to tell me in detail how an engine works, but I'm afraid it was just in one ear and out the other. Sorry, Dad. I'm not naturally interested in engines. It's not my fault. I could try to be interested, but I'm not. This can happen as well when you're just really tired and you're trying to listen. Maybe you're in a lecture at university or maybe you're in a meeting and you're trying to focus on what they're saying but you're really tired and really distracted by other things and you can say, I'm afraid it was in one ear out the other. But don't say that to your boss. <laughs> Number three, at this rate, at this rate, this is a very common phrase that we use all the time in daily English. So in order to explain this, I'm gonna give you the example first, okay? A couple of weeks back, it was really, really wet in the UK. It was just raining every day, all day, and a lot of fields in the local area flooded and lakes just overflowed and it was just crazy. And I went out for dinner with my family to a pub and the pub was in a bit of a valley and the car park was in the valley as well. And as we were eating, the rain was coming down like, crazy and dad looked out the window and said at this rate we'll have to swim home at this rate we'll have to swim home meaning and this is the meaning if something continues in the same way with the same energy and the same speed it will lead to a certain result so at this rate meaning if the rain continues to fall as heavily as this we will have to swim home number four a win-win situation so a win-win situation is a situation where every party involved is happy and benefiting from something. A win-win situation could be an office in London, and I'm actually gonna use a real office because I used to teach English in offices in London. I went to this one office, right? They had a pool table, they had a darts board, they had a jukebox, they had like a karaoke machine. Do you would think that this is like, distracting from work, but no, it's a win-win situation because the employees are happy and the employer is happy because they've created a relaxing environment at work so that the employee is really happy and relaxed and more likely to do a better job and the employer benefits because they do a better job. So they've created this lovely environment in their office everyone's happy with. Try to think of a win-win situation and put it in the comments below. Number five, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. This is a really positive, happy expression that I use all the time. And it means that a situation was almost destined to happen. Nothing could have prevented it. For example, the way that I met Tom, it was just so lucky. We were 
both in the right place at the right time and the stars aligned and we crossed paths. And so I often say it was meant to be. And here, one of my favorite words, destiny, comes to mind. If you feel like something was your destiny, it means it's already been decided for you. I'm the kind of person where I'm very positive and I like to reflect on situations positively all the time. So if you're like that, then by all means, add this expression into your vocabulary. <laughs> Number six, wait and see, wait and see. To wait and see is just to be patient, just wait. There's nothing you can do. If you're waiting for a decision to be made, you know, something really, really important, but you have no control over that decision, we often just say, wait and see. Don't stress out about it, just be calm. There's nothing you can do about it, so there's no point in wasting energy. <laughs> now, I have to say, this is used usually about negative situations or worrying situations that you feel might have a negative result. For example, Tom's aunt has a kind of farm. It's like a mini farm. There's like donkeys, chickens, quails. I think there's a goat. It's so amazing. Anyway, one of the chickens got attacked by a fox. Really sad. And they gathered him up and they put him in a hutch and he was kind of alive still, but they just had to wait and see. Meaning they just had to monitor his progress to see if he would live or die. In the end, I'm happy to say that he lived. So that was a positive outcome, but very often it's not a positive outcome with things like that. And you know, sometimes you just have to prepare for the worst to happen just in case it does. Number seven, to think something over, to think something over. So this means to give something some thought. You know, whatever it is really requires your attention and your time to make sure you're making the right decision on something. Sometimes I say, I'll think it over and I'll give you an answer in a week or so. So maybe I need a week to think about a big decision, something that requires a lot of energy to decide on. I have to say when Tom proposed, I did not need to think it over. It was an immediate yes. So there's an example of when I didn't use it. <laughs> not very helpful. Number eight, to put your mind at rest. To put your mind at rest. This one I use a lot because guess what? You might not know this about me. I'm someone that worries about things. The way that I cope with that is with positivity and that really helps. Sometimes you just need something to put your mind at rest, which means to make your mind peaceful, especially when you're worried about something particular. The other night, I had to drive home in really bad weather. It was howling a gale, there was thunder and lightning and really, really heavy rain, and I had to drive home for about two hours in the dark as well. My mum was really, really worried, and to put her mind at rest, I texted her when I got home to say that I got home safely. Number nine, to fill someone in. To fill someone in is to update them on all the information they need to know about a situation. For example, my friend knew that I was engaged, but she didn't know the details and she wanted to know everything. The proposal, whether I was surprised, whether I saw it coming. I had to fill her in, okay? Which means update her on the entire thing. So I gave her all the juicy details over a cocktail or two at my friend's house. So you can use this in your daily life. You can also use it in business. It would sound very natural if you asked someone to fill you in on something. And that just means update you. Number 10, to keep your options open. To keep your options open. Now this just means to not do anything that will reduce your choice on something. So to keep all your choices available. Options just means choices. When I was applying for university, what happens is you apply to a selection of universities and they tend to just say, yes, you have a place at our university as long as you get the predicted grade that your college has predicted. And at that point, you don't say no to any of them because you want to keep your options open so that you have as much choice as possible after you get your results to decide which one you want to go with. I love telling you about daily natural English. I feel like I'm kind of sharing secrets with you because really you can't learn this stuff in a textbook. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you did. You can also click subscribe if you want to and that would really support my channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram. Just type in English with Catherine. I hope you have the most wonderful weekend ever and I'll see you next Friday for another video. Bye.